Restock Parts Methods Review In the Restock Parts video, we discussed why we restock parts into MaxTrax. To track inventory, to track our parts purchases for accounting, and to track our purchases and sales for submitting warranties, reviewing price changes, those kinds of things. There are actually four ways to restock parts in MaxTrax, and the method used really depends on whether you're using the integrated online ordering and if you know the part number. Let's review. Now the most basic way to restock parts is through the restock parts icon on the toolbar. This method is basically selecting the vendor the parts came from, entering the parts on that vendor invoice that you are recreating in MaxTrax, and posting the purchase to accounts payable and updating the quantity on your parts list. Using this method, we can assign a part to be sold on a particular RO, and then go back to that RO, select from parts on order, and enter that purchase part under the appropriate labor service. This is pretty straightforward. We've created additional methods for restocking parts to take advantage of integrated online parts catalogs, online ordering, and ultimately reduce your data entry with the parts order form. So let's open an RO and click on Add Parts. We'll select Factory Motor Parts, and the online catalog already knows your year, make, model, and engine. So let's select a belt. And click Add Items to RO. This is method number two. Now I have my system set to automatically create a part record on my parts list for that part, and my part price matrix assigned to factory motor parts is applied automatically to set a selling price on my RO. What we've just done here is eliminated the need to use the add a part wizard and create that part record from scratch. Plus we didn't have to type that part number on the repair order. This is our first time savings, and we know we've ordered the correct part. Now if we have online ordering set up with factory, we would submit that order online through the parts order form. Check this out. If I click on OK Save, my system is set to prompt me. I don't have this part in stock. I need to order that part. I click in the order column, select the vendor, create the parts order form, use my RO number for the purchase order number, and click to send order. Now I need to jump back into this vendor's online ordering and finish the order, and then close. Then my parts order form says submitted, and I can just save and close this parts order form. That saved parts order form is listed under the order parts icon on the toolbar. So about 30 minutes later or so, the parts driver from factory shows up, hands me my part and the vendor invoice. Here is a second major time saver. Normally, I would click on Restock Parts and enter that vendor invoice from scratch, like in the Restock Parts video, but now I just click on the Order Parts icon, highlight my parts order form, and click this big green check mark to convert the selected parts order into a received vendor invoice or Restock Parts. Recognize this form. I enter the total on the paper vendor invoice to check my math. The parts are already listed. All I do is click OK Save, select to post and update inventory, and enter the vendor invoice number. Again, another huge time saver. Now I could have done that with or without hitting the Send Order button. This would be our third method. So I could have created that parts order form on the fly and still have called the parts house to order my parts, or I could have printed that parts order form and faxed it in, or even created a PDF and emailed it. We have several options here. Either way, I've saved a lot of time in data entry, and those parts are already assigned to their appropriate repair order. When I was using MaxTrax in our shop, I'd say about 80% of all of our part purchases were done online like this. Now what if we need a dealer part, which at this point seems we will never have online ordering for? How do we order those parts and enter them into Max Tracks? We could use a traditional method, restock parts. So once the parts are delivered, we have the vendor invoice in hand, click on restock parts, enter the part number, 
post an update, and then go back and add that part to the repair order. But sometimes we want to create an estimate in MaxTrax so we know how much the job is going to be to be able to sell that job and get authorization. But we don't have the part number to enter the actual part on the RO, and we're not going to ask the dealer parts guy on the phone to read us a dealer part number. So we just get the cost for the part and then tell them to send the part. This is where we use a part placeholder. So let's open our repair order and select a part placeholder under Add Parts to enter a dealer door handle. So no part number needed. We'll just enter our cost and then apply our part price matrix. And this gets us our selling price for the estimate. I'm going to go back and make it an even $200 for this customer. Once that door handle is delivered, we would go back into the RO, right click on the part placeholder, and select to replace this placeholder with a part from inventory list. Here, we would enter the actual part number, so we go through the add a part wizard. Our matrix is applied here. And we select that part number. And if there's a discrepancy between our selling price in the new part record, remember I quoted that guy an even $200, we have a chance to select to either use the inventory part price or use the placeholder price to be able to stick to our quoted estimate. And once again, use that parts order form to reduce your data entry so we don't have to recreate the restock invoice from scratch. Rather, we just have to select to convert the parts order form. Enter the vendor invoice number, and post to accounts payable, and update our parts inventory list. It's all about reducing your data entry. If we go back into our repair order, the red circle with the slash is gone, meaning our parts tracking and accounting is all done. This was our fourth method to restock parts in MaxTrax. A note here about terminology. I've talked to a lot of shops that say, I don't stock these parts, so why would I select restock parts? What's important to remember here is that full accounting users especially need to have a part stocked or technically speaking, entered into MaxTrax before they can sell that part on a repair order to make that short sale warning, that red circle with the slash through it, go away before the repair order is paid and closed. This warning just lets us know that we have data entry to do before closing out that RO. Now a quick recap. Method one, click on the restock parts icon and enter parts from list or add the part to the list with the add a part wizard and then select that part number from the parts list on our restock invoice and assign to an RO. Method two, go to an online catalog, select a part from there and create a parts order form and then send the order electronically online. Receive the parts delivery and select the parts order form from this icon and convert it to a restock invoice and post. Method three, Get that part again online for our repair order or just from your parts list. Create the parts order form when exiting the RO just to save on our data entry and call in that order to the parts warehouse. Just save the parts order form, don't send order. And when the part arrives, convert the parts order form to a receive vendor invoice, post to accounts payable, and update our parts list quantity again. The fourth method is to use a parts placeholder to build your estimate, order that part over the phone, and replace that parts placeholder with the actual part number when the part arrives. Again, create a parts order form to reduce our data entry and post. It may take some time to get used to the different methods, but in a few weeks it will become second nature and that online ordering feature will save you lots of time spent ordering parts, help to eliminate inaccurate parts orders, and ultimately reduce your data entry. Please see the training videos for details on how to add parts to a repair order from an online catalog and the parts placeholder review. And this concludes the lesson on restock parts methods review.